Hello, everyone. It's Jake Adams with Rebuilders.com, and I'm at Energy 2016 with uh, Sharon Ram, the chief scientist of Red Sea. How's it going, Sharon? Very well. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so we've sat down today to uh, talk about a few of the novel products in the Red Sea catalog. Uh, you're the chief scientist, and you're one of the very few professional aquaristic researchers in this whole industry. Industry. Tell me a little bit about what that means at, for you at Red Sea. First of all, thanks for the compliment. Okay. Um, my position in Red Sea is basically to develop all the products and start the process that moving the product from development uh, to production. Basically, what we are doing in my laboratory is we start from scratch, from the formulation of the chemicals, the supplements, and even the filtration system. Uh, we have a very big laboratories running between 10 to 15 systems 24-7. Uh, this is basically the amount of systems that are running with every system runs a different experiment or different product. I have several technicians and chemists working for me. Uh, so basically, we are all around with Rift all day long. So, so as far as I'm concerned, I think Red Sea is one of the very few companies that really makes the investment in aquaristic technologies and, and really doing the hands-on research, keeping their hands wet. And you keep your hands wet. Huh? Of course. I'm starting my morning dipping my head inside the aquarium. Usually my technicians are upset that the moment I arrive to the lab, I'm putting my hand inside, I'm destroying everything they do. You know, what I like to do, I like to expand, expand the borders of reef keeping. Right. So I'm trying to do all the mistakes, okay? Pull whatever uh, solution or liquid I can figure or think of just to see what are the borders. Usually because my technician, all of them are hobbyists, okay? They like to prefer things, you know, by the book. By the book, the books that I wrote, other wrote, and usually when I'm doing all these so-called mistakes, they are really upset. All of my employees are hobbyists. They right. have at least five to ten years of experience, and that's it. We are always wet hands. So, so one thing that I really appreciate about some of Red Sea's products is um, you conceptualize. You take these ideas that uh, that hobbyists have and that we've experimented with, and you dig further, you dig deeper into what we are observing. And so today we're gonna to talk about a few different products in the Red Sea catalog. Uh, we're gonna talk about some carbon, the coral nutrition, and uh, Nopox, and the coral pro salt. Um, so the first one I wanna talk about is the, uh, the Nopox here. Um, tell me briefly, what is Nopox? Nopox is uh, what we believe is the complete fuel for nutrient, biological nutrient reduction in the aquarium, okay? Many people know that they need to add carbon because it, it is the fuel that uh, helps the denitrifying bacteria go over the reduction process of nitrate to nitrogen compounds. Nopox is the only controllable and complete solution. The reason we believe it's a complete solution because it provides three things. Very important things. One, it guarantee that the denitrification process will be a complete process, meaning that all nitrate will be converted to nitrogen gas. Okay? Just adding a carbon to a system may also end up in other dissimulation process. So, so, so before you get a, uh, a little bit too far ahead, before Na Nopox came around, uh, we all experimented with various forms of carbon dosing uh, in the form of vodka, sugar, sometimes rum, and various combinations thereof. And when Nopox came around, uh, I started having a lot more success as far as a, a liquid carbon dosing solution. So tell me a little bit about how Nopox is fundamentally different from these other carbon sources. Absolutely. In order to have a safe dissimulation process, you need to understand that just adding the carbon is not enough. This is only 40% of what is needed. There are what, is needed what is needed for? For complete denitrification process. Okay? There are specific cofactors and specific trace elements that must be in the exact stoichiometrical proportion to the carbon and to the nitrogen in order to achieve a complete 
uh, reduction of nitrate to nitrogen. If you don't provide these elements or you don't provide the carbon in the direct proportion, you might end up with some very toxic compounds or byproducts. For example, there are several other dissimilation processes which will end up uh, by the conversion of nitrate to ammonia or nitrate, which are toxic. Okay? And most of us, we never measure ammonia and nitrate on a regular basis. Okay? And I assume that many people, if they will start to measure nitrate, they will see that just by adding vodka or VSV and not providing the full needs, they will see buildup of nitrates. So, so that would explain why people who are dosing vodka, sugar, and vinegar sometimes have a little bit of success bringing their phosphates down or their nitrates or a little bit of both, but it doesn't seem like a complete solution. Um, and so one of the other movements that uh, I have not personally had great experiences with is uh, solid carbon dosing, better known as biopellets. So, so how is this different from biopellets? As I explained before, you need to provide the full package of components. Uh, we have found that even by adding the wrong proportion of carbon, when you break the, the nitrogen-carbon ratio, you will end up with ammonia, nitric oxide, nitrous oxide, which are very dangerous. You will also may end up, if you reduce all nitrate, uh, to zero levels, the denitrifying uh, bacteria, which are facultative bacteria, they will start to use other compounds as the last electron donors. They will convert all the sulfate to hydrogen sulfate, which is very, very toxic. So, so is it safe to say that uh, dosing vodka, sugar, and vinegar is essentially like giving the bacteria candy, but not the rest of the nutrients that they need? Absolutely. And it's just exactly like giving them candies, uh, overdosing them with sugars, and they just, you know, uh, run all over and reduce the nitrate without any control. And it's very dangerous. Um, Denitrification must be uh, controlled by the amount of nitrogen that you measure and the amount of carbon that you provide. So, uh, when trying to convince uh, fellow friends and uh, reefers and hobbyists um, to try NOPOX instead of uh, vodka, sugar, or vinegar, one of the things I've explained to them is something that you've told me in the past about the addition of uh, cofactors to drive certain types of, of bacterial growth as opposed to others. And so it's my understanding that the cofactors you add um, allow certain bacteria to use, the, the certain desirable bacteria to, to use this nutrient source uh, and not others. Can you just touch up on that a little bit? Yes, as, I, as I told you, there are a few dissimilation process. We want the one to enhance the one that end up with nitrogenous gas. We also want the, a specific strains of bacteria that also consume the phosphate during the production, the, the reduction of uh, nitrogen. This is how we keep also nitrogen and phosphorus uh, ratios. Because you know, when you reduce only the nitrate and you have enough phosphate, you'll have cyanobacteria bloom because they can absorb nitrogenous gas from the atmosphere. They become the strongest uh, bacteria in, in our ecosystem. Uh, we also inhibit the hydrogen sulfate uh, activity. It ends up the moment the nitrate is reduced to zero level. This is why we also uh, recommend not to go to zero levels of uh, nitrogen and phosphorus. So one of the things that everyone in life, whether it's aquariums or computer problems or car problems, everybody's looking for a silver bullet to fix everything. And people want immediate results. And why is it that this takes a little bit longer than some other things to completely get rid of, of phosphates? This is a great question. We need to understand that most of our system, which is built by uh, uh, live rocks or dry rocks, which are old aragonite uh, structure, if it's an uh, old acropora, uh, rock or old reef rock. Any, any, any biogenic rock. rock. Yes, any biogenic rock, exactly, has some deposit of calcium phosphate and calcium nitrate. Even if you take corals today that you grow, when you drill the base of them, you'll find uh, deposits of calcium phosphate and calcium nitrate. And so, so just to interject there, um, not only does biogenic rock, live rock, any kind of coral-derived rock have some degree of phosphates in it, all, all 
carbonite source. Right. But also, when you put these types of rockets in your tank, if your phosphate levels rise, the rock will actually absorb Absolutely. a certain degree of the phosphate as calcium phosphate. This is why it's actually really important to have your nitrogen and phosphorus uh, management solutions in place at the beginning of your reef tank. If you've been fighting phosphate problems for a long time, you actually have built up a reservoir of phosphates in your rock, right? And we have found that basically phosphates start to, be, to leach out or to be released from the calcium phosphate or the, from the aragonite lattice only when the levels of phosphate are very low, near 0 0.02, 0 0.01 ppm. Then the process of leaching, okay, may take at least three to four months. But we need to understand that phosphate doesn't grow through this simulation process. It doesn't being converted to phosphorus. It is consumed by bacteria and by the algae and other things to grow the body mass. Okay, so, so that's a really important point. When you grow an algae filter or a biological filter or bacteria filter, the phosphorus or the nutrients are still in your aquarium, right? So the bacteria, when they grow, they absorb it but yes. that's not what gets it out of your tank. Absolutely. What is it that gets it out of your tank? In order to strip out the phosphate from the system, we're using the, we're enhancing the activity of PHA bacteria. This is a, an anaerobic aerobic process. These bacteria consume phosphate and convert it to large chain, what we call polyphosphate. What's happened is that the phosphate, it's like type of lipid for, for this discussion, and they start to flow to the, to the water column. Then we need to strip it out with a very good protein schema. Many people that complain that I can't reduce the phosphate by nopox or it takes more time, need, we ask them to check if the, uh, you know, the, the protein schema is suitable enough for the system, okay, to strip out the phosphate. This is the only way to take out the phosphate from So, So long story short, Nopox essentially concentrates your, your undesirable nutrients into a form that is more readily uh, uh, removed from using a protein skimmer, correct? Is there anything else you want to say about this before we move on to the next? Yeah, I think we cover almost everything. All right, so Nopox, you know, this is definitely one of those products that uh, it's really important in the, in the reef aquarium toolbox. Uh, it's a great uh, product for... Uh, carbon dosing to your tank, and you should really try this uh, instead of some of the sugary alternatives.